is the Gita a call for violence? This is one of the most disturbing things for many people when they study the Gita that, that okay, it is spoken in the war field and it got a peace, peace seeking person uh, to fight a war. So that is true. That, but is the Gita itself a book that calls for violence as a universal spiritual message for everyone? So to check this out, let's look at three things. The content of the Gita, the context of the Gita and the consequence of the Gita. The content of the Gita is that it doesn't contain any hate speech. There's no reminder of atrocities. There are no calls for revenge. In general, whenever somebody is, if you want to control someone, one of the easiest ways to do that is to trigger their emotions. Riots are incited by, by reminders of atrocities. So if there are no reminders of atrocities, there are if there is a rational discussion, then quite often the emotion that drives people to violence is taken away. So if the Gita was simply a call for violence, Krishna could have spoken about how terribly the, the Dwapadi, their wife had been dishonored. But there's not one reference to that in the Bhagavad Gita, which is remarkable. So in, in content, there is nothing that is directly inciting war. Far from, far from triggering emotions, the Gita repeatedly calls for dispassionate work. That means freeing oneself from emotions uh, that might disrupt one's equanimity. So here we see the, the word you, one of the verses in the Bhagavad Gita which uses the word Yudhyasva, fight. Mai sarvani karmani sanyasya dhyatma chetasa nirashi nirmamo bhutva yudhyasva vigata jvaraha. So it says fight, but normal causes for fighting are completely rejected within this verse. So normally people are possessive. I want more and more power, more and more property, more and more land or ego. I am, I am more powerful than this other person. Or of course, there is some other variant of material consciousness like vengefulness. But Krishna says in this particular verse, Nirmamo, that means have no possessiveness. Nirahankaraha, have no ego. And Adhyatma Chetasa, that has spiritual consciousness. So this is not at all a call for fighting in the normal sense. Then why is it fight, why is it fighting at all? So it is fighting because if you look at the context, there was no alternative. That every effort was made human and divine to prevent the war. What do you mean human and divine? Krishna himself was God and he also strove for peace. So the, if you look at further the context, the Pandavas were wrong repeatedly, yet they sought peace. That is they who sent peace messengers and do not just an ordinary peace messenger. Krishna himself went as a peace envoy. And then even in their peace proposal, instead of demanding their rightful uh, half of the kingdom, they were ready to settle for just five villages. So this is the extent to which they were ready for even a symbolic reconciliation, not even a just reconciliation. But even that was rejected by Duryodhana. So now if you look at the long term consequence, okay, the immediate consequence was that Arjuna fought a war. But the Gita has, uh, has been a book that has influenced millions for more than a millennia, for many millennia. And there are many commentators who have commented on the Gita, several hundreds of commentators in Sanskrit and many, many in English. So now tradition, none of the more prominent traditional commentators on the Gita have used the Gita to justify violence, have said that the Gita's, Gita calls people, calls its readers, or they didn't say that their followers should resort to violence. Although if you consider there was a, there was reason for that. There were, yeah. At the time of most of the prominent commentators on the Gita, Madhvacharya, Ramanujari, Vishnachi Thakur, India was ruled by invaders who were quite um, 
who were quite violent and plundering and destroying the spiritual culture of India. But the commentators didn't use, didn't use the Gita to justify violence against them. And they didn't say that the Gita's message is that you should fight. So what is the point over here? The Gita's essential message is neither of silence nor of violence. It is transcendence. That so when so each one of us needs to individually pursue transcendence. And whatever be the way to transcendence, that is what we need to follow. So for example, sometimes the way to transcendence is by silence or tolerance. On this world, there are always some problems in the world. Don't get caught in all of them. That is one way to pursue tra transcendence. Another time, it might require that we have to be assertive. And sometimes we have to be aggressive. But the point of the Gita is neither silence nor violence. The point of the Gita is to pursue transcendence. That's its essential message. And that is what has inspired millions of people who have studied the Bhagavad Gita throughout history. And even the many, many who are inspired by the Gita study now. So now, why the battlefield setting? Because it demonstrates how transcendence can be pursued even in the most unlikeliest of settings, that is, a battlefield.